geometry editing. Um, feature editing allows you to change some actual features, whether it, be, whether it be a whole size or actual size of the part. The geometry editing is going to allow us to divide up surfaces so we can create efficient uh, re or, or effectively create regions for mapped meshing. So we can think in terms of trying to create rectangular surfaces or well-shaped triangular surfaces. Um, and again, uh, this is interactive. So if you have a meshed surface and you make a division using the uh, geometry editing tool, then based on your remesh control setting, it's going to interactively update your mesh. So let's go and take a look at a couple of these options in the geometry editing tool. So popping right back into FEMAP, I'm going to grab uh, yet another model. And what I want to do is take a look at the, the geometry uh, editing pad and washer commands. And then we'll take a look at how we use those to create some mapped mesh around these holes. So these are uh, similar to, just to point out uh, in the menu, the curve from surface commands, uh, pad, uh, washer, the split locations, point to point, point to edge, and edge to edge. These are just an interactive version of those pull down menu commands. So when I started the, the webinar, uh, I said the meshing tools are a collection of, in one location of commands in the menus. Uh, this is yet another example of that. So let's go and grab the geometry editing and take a look at a couple of these. So the pad, <coughs> excuse me, operates um, with an offset type of either a factor or a distance. Distance is an actual offset distance from the hole. The factor is a factor times the radius of the hole. Okay, so if I choose a hole, it creates that geometry. Now, uh, long ago, you would have had to move the work plane around, draw all these curves, project them onto the surfaces, set up the map meshing, and, and then you can mesh the surfaces. Uh, so today, we can go and click the pad command, and it'll automatically place our pad for us. And um, it sets up the map mesh for us. So I'm going to undo that one. And let's take a, a look at another option. There's also a pad uh, where we add a washer along with it. So the washer region could be a region where you're going to correct connect an, RB, uh, an RBE uh, to create a bolt connection or anything similar, uh, constraint or what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and say add washer and leave the factors the same. It's going to do essentially the same thing, but it's going to add a washer region in here. And we can, again, go and create our mapped mesh. So if we go to our mesh surface tool, click mapped mesh, and I'll go ahead and jump ahead, and we're going to tell it we want a minimum of three elements on any curve there. And you can see we get a nice uniform mesh. And this will uh, produce some uh, odd result for just a minute until we update the mesh size. And uh, it'll clean all that up for us. It'll propagate that mapped approach down outward to the pad. OK, so the geometry editing um, pad and pad and add washer. The washer is very similar. If we go and uh, just import a piece of geometry here, let's just go back to uh, to this one. And uh, undo that last uh, set of commands. All right, the washer is pretty much the same. It operates with a factor or a distance, one times the radius outward, or an actual distance, if you want to make sure you get a, an actual representation of a washer that you're uh, using. So again, it just creates that region. We can go to our mesh surface tool, and it'll create a nice mapped region around that hole. 
So let's uh, go ahead and add a, uh, I'm going to put the pad back on there for a minute because we're going to talk about the other geometry editing tools. Uh, let's turn the washer off. Uh, don't want the washer for this uh, this one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about a couple of the others. There's uh, this point to point, point to edge, edge to edge, again, goes right along with the curve from surface commands. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to go and say, I want to go and mesh these surfaces to start with. So I'm going to go and uh, mesh um, that whole upper section there. And just to show that, as we said a few minutes ago, when we go and use one of these commands, say point to edge, for example, um, if we're making a point to edge, then it's expecting the clicks to be in that order. So we're going to go the point we want to split from, and then the edge we want to split to. So again, I'll turn the mesh off for a minute since we see it interactively updates. And uh, we're going to split our geometry in this fashion, just go from point to edge. Okay, point to point. It works uh, the same way. We're just going to select simply two points. And we typically, FEMAP would recognize the mesh um, region here, and we wouldn't have to make this, these additional splits. But we'll go ahead and do that today. So you see we're just creating nice rectangular regions in here. And, and again, it's updating the mesh, except it's, it's not mapping out for us, and we're going to we're going to fix that in just a minute. We'll just go and update our, our surface mesh, and it'll map it right back out for us. So going to the edge-to-edge -to -edge command, this is uh, this one's the only one that's different. And what this gonna, is going to ask you for is an edge to split to, and then the edges to split from. And what I like to do, since I'm usually splitting from more than one to edge, I'll use the dialog. And you see it creates all of those splits. It's a little more efficient than using the point edge if you have a lot of them to do. Of course, uh, for some reason, that produced a little bit of uh, odd results. So we'll delete that mesh. And we're left with a, a nice uniform mesh here that we're going to update using our mesh surface tool. And grab the select, and I'm going to go ahead and do all of this at once. By, and all I did was hold the control shift and make my first connect click to uh, to grab all of my surfaces using a polygon pick. And again, you see it made a nice uniform mesh um, on my surface now. So we have a nice clean mesh. Okay. Um, back to the geometry editing tool. Um, extend. Um, I don't know how many out there have had a lot of experience with um, um, mid surfacing, but from time to time, when you mid surface a component, there will be surfaces that need to be intersected, but they'll be separated um, by half the material thickness. It really just depends on how your geometry is created. If we went into, for example, this model right here, we would end up with uh, some of those situations and we would need to to uh, extend some of these surfaces. Uh, and maybe that's a, a topic for another, another day. So the way we can extend this, uh, the geometry editing tool gives us a nice tool to just go and extend it. Uh, extend shape linear or cur uh, continuous curvature. Uh, the continuous curvature, if it were a slanted surface or an angled edge, I'm, I'm sorry, not a slanted surface, but an angled edge, such as a uh, fillet, uh, so, such as one of these gussets, and you extended it, it would not extend and create a 90 degree out here. It would just extend it along its, its profile. Um, so, so what we can do though is we can say we're going to extend shape linear for this one. We have no need to change. Uh, we can 
extend it to the to a particular solid to a location a finite distance to a surface or using the surface auto curve and I'm going to show you the difference between these two the surface and the surface auto curve and what I like to do is you you know you can extend to a group of surfaces by using just selecting them ahead of time and and uh, or we can go and grab that single surface mode and we'll grab our select icon icon and we'll select the surface we're extending to and the surface we're extending so again we can go around and do that I'm going to undo this and show you the uh, difference between the surface and the surface auto curve so if I change this to surface auto curve the same input to the command is going to be to select the surface you want to extend to but then the next curve is going to recognize that you have a, a pattern going around there and we can uh, go ahead and extend all of that to intersect our base surface and we can take a look at uh, we can go back and take a quick look at another use for our entity at locate our free edges for example and we see that okay well, we would have an internal free edge and we would need to uh, do something like use a non-manifold add command to to clean that up and now our free edges are cleaned up and these surfaces would mesh nicely okay toggle the entity locator back off and uh, go forward okay we talked about the washer and pad the point to point point to edge the extend project and move point this is a very useful command as well so I had a job a few months back where it was a curved panel and one and that actually had bosses in here and we were going to just represent the bosses with uh, bar elements but uh, when we mid surfaced it we come up with all this geometry that um, because of the curvature of the panel had surfaces sticking through one another so the geometry editing tool with the project move point you can go to a project to a point to a curve to a surface or a solid let's just take a look at this so if we're going to go to a point the input to the command once we hit the select icon is to select the point you want to move to or project to and then the point you want to move so I'll hit undo and we can see what curvature is uh, I mean what selecting a curve does for us but once you select curve or surface this edge aligned option comes into play and if you don't have the edge aligned option if this this surface were not perpendicular to this one when we look at it from the top view uh, you can see they're perpendicular in that plane if it weren't you could um, possibly warp the surface you're moving so this edge aligned will give you a little better result so again the input to the command is the curve you're moving to and then the point you're moving or the surface you're moving to and then the point you're moving so that's the project point command the other command the next one is a project curve so what this does is it splits surfaces using a curve um, much the same way the geometry curve from surface commands do except it gives us a little bit uh, more functionality because we see in this part here on the on the slide that we have three steps in here and there's actually another step over here on the other side that we'll see in a minute and then when you mid surface the part the steps aren't represented and we need to do something to to correct that so that we get the appropriate mesh thickness so let's take a look and see how that's done so grabbing right here I already have the uh, surfaces med uh, mid surface 
and I have the original geometry in here. We're going to take advantage of another little piece of FEMAP functionality uh, by uh, changing the visibility and hiding the surfaces of our original solid. So on the check mark over here by my geometry uh, demo solid, I'm going to go and say hide surfaces, and it has left me with a view of the curves. I can go back to my meshing toolbox, go to my geometry editing, and say project curve. And I've got a couple of options here. Imprint, uh, if you notice here, I'm going to imprint these curves so just to give you an idea. I'm going to imprint that curve, and you see if I imprint that curve right there, it won't extend all the way to the mid-surface uh, of the vertical surface. So I'm going to change that to uh, either imprint extend or imprint extend and clean, which that's what I'm going to use here. And the input to the command is simple. Again, you're selecting the surface you want to project to, and then the curve, and you can see it projected all the way to the, the the middle uh, upright surface there. Again, and we can go quickly around our component and make our, our changes. Select our surface and select our curve. I'm going to go back and turn off the original geometry. And you can see we have a nice, um, nice way of doing that. And I could go and take it further going back to geometry removal at a mesh point and uh, select these holes and I can just do a dialog select there uh, I didn't want that one so let's just do uh, let's just hold the shift and left mouse button down uh, or the sh control shift to get a polygon pick and we can Remove all of those loops quickly and leave mesh points at each one. 